welcome back to Let's Review It. Um, we've been making quite a few videos recently using uh, drone footage. Um, and we've had a few weeks now, we've had a few test flights, and we thought now that we've kind of gotten used to how it works, we'd do a video and, and talk to you guys about what we think of it. So the first thing we had to consider was why are we buying a drone to start with? Well, I wanted it to film things like travel, scenery, and of course, be able to spy on the neighbours. And I wanted it to film tracking shots of bikes and cars. So after a lot of research, we ended up with the DJI Spark. There are several different packages available for the Spark, so make sure you know what you're purchasing. The basic package will cost you about £450. You'll get the drone, you won't get a controller, you'll have to fly it with your phone, which will severely hamper what you can do with a drone. Once you start adding on the controller, the charger and all the other accessories, you're looking at considerably more than that. So have a look around for some bundles online. We purchased all of this kit for just over £550, but if you bought the items individually, they'd be considerably more than that. Before you get airborne, make sure you've inserted your memory card underneath the water resistant cover. Without this, you won't be able to record anything. We've got a 128 gigabyte memory card, which is plenty for our usage. Um, now, assuming that you've already charged your battery, you need to insert this as well. And then once you've done so, the lights here will come on, which will indicate how much battery you've got left. These will also show on the remote control, which I think is a pretty cool feature. We're flying today using the remote control. This works as a signal booster. You can fly using just your mobile phone, but it will reduce the signal and reduce the distance that you can fly. So now you're good to go. You can see the camera there. It's gyro stabilised and it'll activate when you actually turn it on. You can't control the horizontal pitch, it'll always be facing the direction of travel, but you can control the vertical pitch of the camera using the controller. One good thing about the Spark when you're first starting out is the proximity sensors. You've got one on the front here and one underneath, so it can avoid colliding with obstacles. It doesn't have one on the back and it doesn't have one on the top, so make sure you're looking out for trees and overhead cables. Takeoff and landing is simple. Push this button and the drone will take off and hover indefinitely, ready to accept your orders. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Should you lose sight of the drone at any point, you can use the home button to bring the spark back. The drone uses GPS to find its way back even if you've lost signal. This is also automatically triggered at a predetermined point when the battery gets low. So what are the Spark's limits? So what are the Spark's limits? So what are the Spark's limits? So what are the Spark's what limits? What are the Spark's 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 Let's limits? go and find out. So we're going to go straight up until we either hit the preset GFS or until we lose signal. Maximum flight altitude reached. We've been working this little drone really hard today, as you can see by its battle scars and green dirt on it. We managed to get it up to 330 feet high before the geofencing kicked in and brought it back down to earth. In standard mode, we got 550 feet away before it lost signal and it automatically returned to home. Sport mode, it got up to 850 feet away, but that was with the wind behind it and it was travelling much faster before it lost signal and automatically returned to home. For anyone into hiking, cycling or walking, the Spark has a cool tracking feature. Click on the icon here and draw a box around whatever you want it to track and go. As you can see, it will follow me from whatever distance I've pre-selected. For a more dynamic look, you can also ask the drone to circle at the speed of your choosing. Cool, huh?
That's all well and good tracking a person, but can it track a bike or a car well enough to do tracking shots, for example? We're gonna go and see. One of the features I was particularly interested in with a drone was its ability to track vehicles to do high level and low level tracking shots. So we've got the drone up in the air, um, it's set to track the car, so we're going to give it a go and see how we get on. to about 25 miles an hour now. Still with us. It works pretty well. The one thing you've got to be careful of is obviously trees, overhead cables, uh, other cars, and if it loses signal for any reason, I suspect it will probably fly all the way back down to the end of the road and land itself and potentially get itself run over. So you've got to be a bit careful when you're doing these tracking shots, but yeah, it works pretty well. Let's talk about battery life. The Sparks battery lasts up to 15 minutes, depending on conditions, but we found that in reality, you have nine to 10 minutes of active flying time before the drone flies itself home, which is good, I guess. This does mean that if you're serious about good footage, you'll need to invest in more batteries. So what are we thinking then? What's the verdict on the spark? Like I think if you buy it as a bundle, it's actually really good value for money and it's much cheaper than its big brother, the Mavic. I think it's very user-friendly for the inexperienced drone pilot. But there are some things you do have to remember. So the return to home settings, for example, you can set what height it flies back at. But you've got to be a bit careful because if you're not watching out for overhead power lines, it might all of a sudden fly up and through them and it's got no top sensor. So that could be a bit of an issue. The other thing that you can personalize is at what point during the low battery phase it actually flies back. So if you're a bit of a risk taker, you can set it to come back when it's in the red. Um, but personally, I think leaving yourself a bit of a grace period for the thing to get back and land is probably a safer option. You've probably noticed that we've not yet spoken about gesture control. We're still learning, so we'll be back soon with a video once we've mastered this. In the meantime though, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notifications button, and we'd love to hear about your drone experiences, be it the DJI, the Mavic, or another brand perhaps. For now, take care and thanks for watching. Bye.